Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video, and let's talk about it. Let's talk about the planet scales rug pull that they just pulled off, and before we actually talk about what happened at the planet scale, how we should react to it, let me share a little bit of the history that I personally faced during the similar situation which has happened in the past. And why does it matter really that we should raise our opinion or at least a voice about exactly what is happening right now? Now this video is not intended for the purpose of putting a hate on the planet scale, no it's not like that. They are also a business, they need to run their business for the profitability and that's acceptable. Everybody understand that part, I understand that very deeply. In this video, I would like to walk you through with some of the situations and scenarios about the products when they are designed for software developers, especially the programmers. First of all, this is very clear that you cannot easily design a product which is going to be used by hundreds and thousands and millions of developers. This is not an easy task to do. Developers doesn't just walk in randomly and start using your product. You need to provide a support to the community. That's how the developer community thrives into the every situation and every market. We love the community support first. If it is for the community, we will adopt it. If it is not for the community, the chances are very high that you will not be accepted as easily as the community products are being accepted. And we developers don't really mind that when you try to make a business out of it. Of course, it's a right for everyone and you should be able to do that but not at the cost when you are sabotaging the entire developer community and the trust that we have shown to you. Let me share a couple of examples where this trust was again and again was broken and I think this happened again this time. Let me share the screen with you with a couple of examples that I personally faced. Now this is AWS Cloud9. Now in case you don't know, Cloud9 was a standalone product. I loved this product and Honestly, I did market it quite well. I never got paid for it. I never got to talk to them even. And I had no idea who they are. I just loved the product that I advocated it so much in the entire students community. It made sense. All I had to do is sign up on their website and then I can start writing the code. I can install MySQL. I can just run everything. And I was teaching a bootcamp on Node.js where we were building an entire application using Node.js and MySQL and everything was so easy. I totally understand that it is really painful thing when uh, students have to install these things and have to work through the, their focus is majorly on the installation part, not on the code part. And AWS Cloud9, at that point of time, it was known as Cloud9, it helped me to actually overcome the burden of installation. Nowadays, installation is much more simpler, all thanks to Docker and so much more. But it helped me in bringing up the platform up and running so fast. And I was able to teach my students about MySQL and Node.js. But the problem was that just the moment I finished up my live bootcamp and the video recordings were made, there was an announcement that Cloud9 is going, getting acquired by AWS. The moment they got acquired, they shut down the free plan. And I was not mad at them, but I thought that it could be really better if you could have left even a small tiny machine of 512 MB RAM or something similar just for open for students at least so that they can learn. If the student today are going to learn from your product, eventually these students will become CTOs and the team leads of the future team and they will recommend your product because they are already very comfortable with you. So this is just one scenario and I still love the product but now it's sadly not free as a product. Now let me walk you through what happens when you design a, a software for a developer community. A lot of companies does this. For example, there is a very famous company, everybody know, know this company, known as MongoDB. And MongoDB has a product known as uh, Atlas. I think everybody is aware of it. And not only just me, almost every single developer who make developer tutorials, coding tutorials, they promote them like anything. None of them is getting paid for it. We just genuinely love the product. Nobody is paying from the MongoDB team to any single YouTuber, but we just love the product. That's why we teach via the Atlas in all of the tutorials that we make. Not only just me, a lot of others do that. If the product is really nice, these YouTubers doesn't really shy away from promoting this and helping the community to get on board and started with that. Atlas is one such product. And the reason for that is, it's free. Not all the free, 
but there is enough of generous free tier that I can start teaching on it and there are students who can follow along with that same free account without worrying about the money part. If Tomorrow Atlas shut down their free tier plan, I wouldn't be happy. A lot of other YouTubers wouldn't be happy just simply because, not because we cannot install MongoDB, we can. We can make tutorials on uh, Docker and installing MongoDB on our own, but this actually is a gateway to your product. So many people I know and I have personally taught are using MongoDB's paid plan. And the reason behind that is just because they got started on MongoDB. They like the developer experience and now it's time to scale. They're scaling on the MongoDB itself. And I think it makes a great business decision that you got started with the free tier, asked your community to, hey, let's try our product. And they tried your product, they loved it. And they continue to love it because you offered a generous free tier. You are taking advantage in the business tier, that's great. And we are taking advantage of teaching people with this and putting up our hobby projects on this one. I love that criteria. And uh, there is another one company known as Planet Scale, which was loved by community. And I'm pretty sure still is being loved by community. But I'm not sure what the future is going to be when you make this kind of a plan change. Let's just go ahead and read this entire article and see what's happening on this side of <laughs> the Planet Scale. So first of all, the article headline, it says Planet Scale Forever. You tell me in the comment section and judge it that whether this headline makes sense or not. PlanetScale is committed to rely, uh, providing a reliable and sustainable platform for our customers, not just in short term, but forever. <clears throat> for this reason, we are prioritizing profitability. It's good. It's good that you prioritize your profitability. But there was a point when you didn't have the budget of marketing at the scale that all the YouTubers did for you. All the, Everybody who loved you were actually, they actually got started just by putting up their hobby, hobby projects. And a lot of YouTubers did your marketing, uh, some for paid, of course, some for free, just because you were offering free, not prioritizing profitability at the cost of marketing at that time. Probably I'm too harsh, but let's just go ahead and read what's happening. Planet Scale is an infrastructure company. Our service is mission critical and we value reliable above all else. All right. Uh, reliability isn't just an uptime percentage on your status page. It means your business is self-sustaining. I agree that. Every unprofitable company has a date in the future where it could disappear. I agree on that part. You cannot survive for long if you're not making a profitable business. With an ever-changing world and economy, this is the situation fought with risk. Uh, we choose to build a company that can last forever. That is why I, <laughs> that's interesting, that is why I have made a decision to prioritize profitability for Planet Scale. I guess this is written by CEO. Yep, CEO of Planet Scale. I like that tone. I <laughs> taking full accountability there. Moving further, as of now, Planet Scale can project profitability after the following key decision: to part away with members of our team. All right, so there is a layoff. Primarily sales and marketing, and sunsetting our hobby plan. Oh goodness, it would like, I would like to express my extreme gratitude for the people uh, are parting ways with today. Okay, so there was, I hope there was at least an email. Our hobby plan will retire on April 8th. Okay, that's really, really, really nearby. You can find more information about the plan deprecation such as exporting your data or upgrading uh, in our hobby plan FAQ documentation. I understand completely that retiring our free tier will cause inconvenience to some users. Inconvenience? A lot of people are going to feel betrayal for that. I hope people understand that we take mission incredibly seriously and this decision was not made lightly. I'm not sure how this decision was made, but I'm pretty sure that whoever you were consulting for this one uh, was not developer. First of all, doesn't understand the developer community and how they will react to it and what implications this is going to cause for a future run. Uh, but yeah, uh, no problem there. If this puts out a difficult situation, please sub uh, email support and planner scale. Now, the reason why this is going to put up a lot of, lot of heat is because if you check out for their hobby documentation plan, uh, the plan that you have to migrate and upgrade, let's go ahead and check out the pricing. So now this is going to cost you at least a $39 per month of a plan. If that would be something like $5, $10, at least a minimum plan for free tier for uh, 
some amount of users, a really low scale of the memory and the storage. But hey, you just went directly to $39 per month. That's not easy for developers who are just getting started. <clears throat> Here's the interesting part. Planet Scale is the main database for companies totaling more than $50 billion market cap. I'm pretty sure you are charging a lot to these companies. And I'm pretty sure there could be enough of planning that could be done that you could have left at least one free tier for the people to try this out at least, uh, to check out. I, I love the product, by the way. There is no harm in the plan scale. It's a good product. Uh, we loved it. We have taught it in the boot camps and students have loved this. But hey, uh, whether you count calories, paid for your morning coffee, sent to work message, brought a new pair, it's almost certain that we have interacted with the technology today. Uh, okay, uh, Planet scale Deloitte and all of that. I think there's no need to read this. But what's interesting is, uh, is to read a couple of more things onto this one. Let me share a couple of more interesting stuff with you. First of all, a couple of tweets, which I think we all should read. Uh, there is interesting ones here. The planet scale situation is really kind of a bummer for me. A lot of other people's too, exactly same. I do not have experience or expertise to comment on the business reasons, industry side of the things, just how it feels from a user's perspective. Killing the free tier really puts it in a tough spot for me. I see Theo talk a lot about the ideas of young devs who care a lot about becoming advocates for software and bringing them to their orgs. And I literally did that with the plant scale. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We have taught so many technologies to the people and the young generation that these generations are now moving, already are moving into big tech roles in the team leads, in the software developers, senior software developers, and even CTOs. And they are bringing a lot of these softwares that they are loving it. Nobody chooses MongoDB or a planet scale as a service just because they have evaluated it properly. There's always some, some biasness which you have got through the experience or through the tutorials, through the YouTubers. And this is actually a really a tough spot. There are at least probably more uh, probably more at this point, three products in production from the agency I worked at last year because I came in and wanted to use it. And it went really, really well. All of these are paying. So the ROI for my free DB is at least three scaling real customer, which to me feels really bad to effectively cut that off. Another big reason I'm bummed up is that I genuinely think Planet Scale is the best database out there and I really want to recommend it to people, but $40 is a lot. This is exactly my point. You could have slashed down the resources, could have offered us something, maybe reduced down a little of more features, but $40 is a lot. It's a lot. It's You cannot put your hobby plans on that. I'm not, I'm not an advocate of saying, hey, give me all everything for free, but all I'm advocating is for the beginners who are just getting started, who are trying to taste the things, how it looks like, does it feel good for me or not, there should be a free tier to test the product. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying give me all of this for free. No, that's not the intention. The branching, rollback, serverless drivers, uh, scaling, unbelievable UI, schema recommendations. We all love this. That's the feature. That's why the planet scale got into the heated zone of the talking conversation of all the YouTubers. That is exactly why it has done. All right. So devs who have fallen in love with all that stuff now uh, are not going to be. Uh, for more of serious funded project, uh, we are probably going to pay $40 and move on. Yes, of course, everybody's going to do that. And whatever we can afford it, but my new project, my new videos, I don't know, man, it's a tough sell at this point. Of course, I will also be looking forward twice, thrice, or probably more before pulling up a in planet scale machine and saying and asking all of my users on YouTube that, hey, let's just go ahead and get started with that. So planet scale will always have a special, and I'm not interested in the rest of the tweet, but it's a really nice tweet if you want to go ahead and read it on Ben Davis. There are a couple of others as well, uh, directly from Planet Scale as well. One interesting one by uh, Max is also here. Is it just me or is it uh, one of the most call of callous uh, layout notices ever? Can't read. Uh, just a brief mention of parting away with the team members, not even mention of helping them land jobs. <laughs> this is how industry works. Anyways, so my point is that it's really a difficult point at this point. Uh, to recommend Planet Scale to anybody. And a lot of people are already moving into different ones. Uh, some are actually moving into AppRite. Some are moving into their own hosted uh, databases. Wherever you are moving, it's your call. It's your decision. I'm nobody to tell you where you should go or what you should do. But all I'm saying is, 
that, hey, uh, free tiers for the developer community, because you build the entire thing around the community, I think the community deserve at least a basic free tier to test out the product so that beginners can, can actually start using your product. I think more people have loved MongoDB Atlas just because it was available for them for freely. They could have already installed the MongoDB on their system and could have worked there and have shown the same love. But don't do this. Don't do this. This is not something that I appreciate. Anyways, this was all just a quick summary of uh, giving you a, a great insight of the situation, what's happening at the planet scale. Uh, you take your own decision and let me know in the comment section how does that looks like. And I'll surely catch you up in the next video.